So for more on how China and the U.S. are cooperating at COP26, I'm joined now by Einar Tangent in Beijing. He's a political and economic affairs commentator. Talk to us about how big a deal this is. Well, it's, it's very important, and it kind of it's a, a strange juxtaposition. I mean, you had Biden uh, criticizing uh, China not actually being there, uh, kind of pointing out or say, inferring that this was an impediment to creating agreements. Meanwhile, uh, as you just heard, 30 uh, virtual meetings leading to a joint declaration, a very important one, the two largest uh, countries. And this kind of indicates that it's always going to be about actions and moving forward and less about all this kind of rhetoric that is uh, being put out there. Yeah, I heard uh, an analyst in uh, Glasgow, actually one of the people at COP26 saying, look, it doesn't matter if the leaders are here. It matters if you've got the nuts and bolts people at the table talking and, and clearly we see an example of that. Uh, let me ask you about last night, of course, uh, we, we had uh, the ambassador, Ching Gong, uh, reading a letter from President Xi at a gala in New York where uh, she basically talking about getting relations back on track. Um, what do you see there? I know they're talking about a virtual meeting between Xi and Biden. Can we expect any kind of breakthroughs there? I mean, is this kind of a, are we seeing a path now? I mean, there was an estrangement, it seemed like the first few meetings with the Biden administration and, and Xi's uh, leaders uh, kind of didn't go very well. Now it seems like maybe perhaps things are moving in the right direction. Well, I, I think so. You know, you've, you've had two statements by, you know, the first two statements by an administration saying that uh, the U.S. no longer expects to change China. But on the other hand, uh, Jake Sullivan the other night on uh, uh, Fareed Zizakaria indicated that he wanted to change everything around China. So I, I think this is uh, Xi's way of kind of setting the tone uh, for this uh, very important meeting, hopefully to get on the same page. Uh, it's just not clear because Biden's is still very much beset by domestic issues. Uh, he's playing to the, uh, you know, to the, to the crowd. Uh, in, in the United States, and it's really hard to see how we can do that. But, you know, remember, a lot of things that uh, she has said in, in that meeting and um, uh, referred to in that letter are all about what uh, China has done. If you recall, back in July, um, you know, she uh, attended a virtual meeting. He made a statement. And at that time, you know, China had put out 500 million uh, vaccines. As of today, it's uh, over 1.5 billion. And that goes to this issue about, you know, instead of words, what you need are actions. Let me ask you about uh, his speech to APEC. Uh, what do you make of uh, what he had to say? It, it shows, I, I would think, how important he sees uh, regional cooperation, e economic growth in the region. Uh, what were your takeaways? Well, uh, same as Nathan's, uh, Mike, it's, uh, it's a situation of how do you start this, uh, you know, economic ball re-rolling. Re I mean, if you look at APEC, it lost uh, just under 2% of its uh, G GDP last year, 2020. I uh, lost eight, over 80 million jobs. And th this can't continue. There has to be some sort of formulation for getting it, uh, getting it uh, done. Uh, China has said, look, we're going to take a leadership role. We're going to define this by action. Uh, we're opening up our economy, and we're hoping you will do the same. And they're warning against this kind of return to a Cold War mentality. Very, very important uh, for ASEAN and a real juxtaposition from what uh, Biden is saying, which is always uh, this kind of free and open Indo-Pacific. Indo Not clear what it means, but it seems to be a dog whistle for uh, division rather than coming together. Do you see any easings of barriers, a uh, freer flow of trade uh, coming out? I mean, what, what do you expect to come out of this meeting? Well, it's uh, hopefully uh, they've been kind of moving sideways, uh, and I mean by the, that the U.S towards, uh, you know, getting rid of some of these tariffs. Um, the USTR said she's going to hold hearings and allow corporate America to make its case to get rid of them. Uh, hopefully, when the two of them meet, they can say, look, uh, inflation is a huge problem. We need to get rid of them. Uh, this would uh, get rid of a massive irritant between these two economies and, at the same time, uh, lessen prices for American consumers in particular. Uh, because, you know, as you know, we know uh, trade, uh, trade to the U.S. was up 30 percent this year after being up many percent last year. Uh, the deficit is expanding, and Biden has to do something at some point. Otherwise, it's just going to spiral. Yeah. Einer Tangent in uh, Beijing Force, thank you so much for your analysis. U.S. President